Good morning, Bears Toss All Stars. Today is this is the All Star Challenge for Thursday, June eleventh, two thousand twenty. All right, let's get started right away. This is in number four at the bottom of your Google Classroom assignment. Uh, I'm gonna have to see what you put as you go to explain the strategy that you use. So if you did not do the writing part, that part is very very important for this. And if you don't do well on that. Um, then you're not going to get full credit for this problem. So it's very important to explain what strategy you use to solve it. Okay, so Miss Montano asked her students to solve the equation shown in the box below. So here's the box. That's the equation. So if you weren't sure what that word meant, it just means there's an equal sign in it. Okay, but it's in the box, so she's going to solve that. Which of the following is closest to the value of n? So neither of them, none of them are going to be exactly the value of n. Which one's going to be the closest, it says. So there's a little bit of estimation involved. When you see a word like about how many or closest or near, right? Doesn't mean you have, we're not going to have to get an exact answer. We're just going to find out which one of these, one-fourth, three-fourths, one-and-a-half, or five-and-a-half are closest to the value of n. Okay, so the box says 6 sevenths plus 5 sixths equals n. So in order to find n, n is equal to these two things being added together. So we'll add those together, and that will be equal to n. So which one of these is closest to n? Okay, so using this strategy, uh, this is called like benchmarks. Finding and thinking about fractions as benchmarks. So six sevenths, you're basically thinking in your head, is that closer to zero? Is it closer to one half or is it closer to one, right? Whereabouts is six sevenths? If this was zero to one and in the middle is one half, where would six sevenths be? So six sevenths would mean that this hole is cut up into seven pieces, seven equal pieces. And this would be six out of seven. So let's see, one, two, three, four, four, five, six, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, there's seven equal spaces here, I drew six equal lines, there's, if you count the spaces, right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so six sevenths would be six out of those seven, so six sevenths is almost one, all right, so it's a little less than, but it's almost one, Okay, but it's important to know that it's it's less than one, right? It's almost one, but a little less. Now, same thing. If we look at five six, that's five out of six equal pieces, or five out of six equal spaces, right? So if I cut this hole into six equal pieces, right? There's one, two, three, four four, five, six equal pieces, five sixths would be, again, almost a whole, right? Five sixths, six sixths is equal to one, so five sixths is really close to one. Same thing here, six sevenths, seven sevenths is equal to one, so six sevenths is almost one, but it's a little less. So if we're adding a number that's almost one, but it's a little less than one, and we're adding another fraction that's almost one, but it's a little bit less than one, then our answer has to be a little bit less than two, right? If this is a little less than one, plus another one that's a little less than one, then combined, they're gonna be a little less than one plus one, which is two. So combined, these two fractions are less than two, but they're close, right? Because this was almost one, and this was almost one, so when you add them together, that would make almost two. Which one of these choices is almost two? It's C, one and a half. So the strategy that I just used there was I looked at these and compared them to benchmarks. These are almost one, this is almost one, so when you do one plus one, Less than one plus a little less than one is gonna be a little less than two. And then we found the one that matched that, which was one and a half. Okay, another strategy you could have used was make common denominators. Okay, six and seven, a common denominator for sixths and sevenths would be 42. Because six times seven gets you to 42. So we're gonna multiply five 
times 7. That way we really multiplied 5 sixths times 1. We multiplied it times 7 sevenths, which is equal to 1. So 6 times 7 was 42. 5 times 7 is 35 out of 42. Then 7 times 6 is 42, so we're going to do 6 times 6. That way we multiplied by a fraction that's equivalent to 1, and we didn't really change the value. 7 times 6, so 6 times 6 is 36. Now when we go to add those, 40 seconds and 40 seconds, our denominators are the same, and now it's going to stay the same because that's telling us the size of, or the number of pieces in each hole, or the size of each piece. And then we just add the numerators. 35 plus 36 would be 71. So 35 plus 35 is 70, plus one more from 36 makes 71. So now we have 71 40 seconds, or 71 divided by 42. So since 42 times 2 is 84, we can't. All right, if we had 71 of something and we're making 42 equal groups, we can only put 1 into each group. You couldn't put any 10s into each group because there's only 7 10s. So you can't put them into 42 groups, right? You'd need 42 10s. So now we have 71 ones. How many ones can we put? We can only put one because if we put two, it would be 84, and that's too much. So now we're going to borrow, and there's a remainder of 29. So the answer is 1 in 29 40 seconds, right? So... 21 40 seconds would be half because 21 is half of 42. So that would be equal to a half. So since it's 29 out of 42, it's just a little bit more than half, right? So it's one and a little bit more than half. So the closest answer, even though it wasn't exactly one and a half, because that would be one in 21 out of 42, and it was one in 29 out of 42. So it was a little bit more than one and a half, but that is the closest choice to the value of n. So if you did it that way, then the um, strategy that you used was a little different than mine. I was able to do this pretty quickly by looking at the benchmark. That's about one, a little less. That's about one, a little less. So a little less than one plus a little less than one makes a little less than two. But there's a couple of different strategies you can use. So I would like you to explain in writing which strategy you used to solve. When you finish writing it, go back and read it over. Make sure that it's clear. Make sure that it shows everything that you understand about this problem. All right. And that's it. Have a great day, everybody. See you later.